Howdy Ags. Welcome back to the Seniors on JV podcast. I'm Kennedy Smith here with my co-host Jake Lanier. I am here and I am taking this off. Kennedy said I had to wear it just for the start, but I'm taking it off. A little too ridiculous. Thank you for participating. Today we have super, super special guest, and I say this every week, but this week I actually mean it. We have the Athletic Director of Texas A&M University, Ross York. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. It's really an honor to be Thank with you for coming both on. of you today. Thank you. I know it was a short notice. Yeah, yeah. We hit you up on Friday evening and now it's yeah. Monday morning, so yeah. we really appreciate it. Absolutely. So I feel like I need to preface this first. Last time we had Jimbo on here, yeah. we had a whole cowboy theme. Okay. I felt like it was very Perfect. fitting for him, yeah. but I never explained it. Okay. And so everybody on the Texags forums was like, why are there horses flying behind his head? What's going on? We got a lot of hate for it. Yeah. So here and on love, this- And love, and love. And love. Here on the Seniors on JV podcast, we like to do different themes. And so this week's theme is space, astronaut that's why i'm wearing my nasa suit yep. it's because our athletic program is out of this world mm-hmm. can we all agree see that's perfect I, you know you when you told me this morning that it was a space theme i'm like okay what is behind this i mean now i know we are a, a space grant university mm-hmm. i mean we know that but of course i like the outer space of our athletic program and we're going to new heights that's to be perfect. honest, I just chose a random theme, but I'm glad it fits. It fits. You know? It really the themes yeah. fit Kennedy's wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah. I did have and this in my course, closet already. She's an entertainer, so I mean it, you're perfect as the host. I'm glad y'all understand. <laughs> and we have our buddy here. What do we call him? Astro um, Astronaut Mike. Mike Fossum. Mike, Mike Astronaut Fossum, Mike. Who's a colleague of mine. Well, we we're on the president's cabinet together, so uh, I know Colonel Fossum, and I think he'd be honored that uh, we have uh, his presence here today. So I love it. It's all good. Well, well, you are, you've been here for three years. You're at one point the youngest AD in the NCAA. Is that still a fact? It's not, no. Okay. When, you, uh, when you're approaching 50 years old, there's a lot of ADs <laughs> that are a lot younger than you, including in the SEC at I one point. I heard the word approaching, though. Approaching, yeah. We're still young and thriving. Absolutely. It's all about how you act, right, and how mm-hmm. you feel. So, But no, there's other ADs actually within the SEC that are younger than me. But I held that honor, I guess, for, I don't know, three or four years, you know, something like that. So Yeah, well, you've been in this game for a long time, but you've only been here for three years. You came from Ole Miss. First thing I wanted to ask, what are the biggest differences you've seen? Yeah, you know, I think any uh, any SEC program has an unbelievable, passionate fan base, institution. If you don't embrace athletics in the SEC as an institution – then you're really gonna you're gonna fall behind, and so everybody embraces it. Ole Miss was great; our kids loved it. Oxford's a really cool town, but I think the difference is the size and scale of A and M. So you have the number of former students that we have, almost 550, and we're gonna mm-hmm. graduate another 10 or 12,000 this weekend. So you have the size and scale, but you also have the Texas, the state of Texas platform, the economy, the way people think, the mindset is just different here. There's always a belief system here that, oh, you know what? We need to renovate Kyle Field. No, 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 we're not going to renovate it. We're going to tear it down and build it over. <laughs> hey, we need to uh, upgrade our track facility. You you both are uh, athletes here at Texas A&M on our track program. You know what? Let's build the best outdoor track stadium that we that we can. So there's a, a mindset here that is just different. And people think that it's easy to raise money and that we can just <laughs> – walk outside and there's oil wells and there's ranches and we just pull all this money. We have to work at it, but you don't have to convince people to care. People right. care automatically. It's that you, are you both wearing your ring today? Of both of you are. Of course. And so again, <laughs> you don't have to tell people, Hey, reminder every day, put that ring on. It's organic. It's ingrained. And it's just a different mentality here at Texas A&M than any place I've been. And I've been at some great places but it's a, it's a different place. It's special. Yeah, everything's bigger and everything's better in Texas. Absolutely. So you were introduced <laughs> July 8th of 2019. That was my first day Your on the first job. First day. First day on the job. And one of my favorite things within the athletic department was every meeting you'd start off with how many days <laughs> right. you were in the athletic right. department. And doing the math, I want to know, do you know the okay. number? And then it's just crazy to think – it's been this many days since you've been here. Right. Do you know the number? I don't know the number. I'd probably have it to hit do four, the, It hit four digits. I'd have to do the math backwards because I'm approaching three years, so 365 times three minus about 60 because today is – we're recording this on May, May the 9th. 9th. 
So we're about two months away. So can you tell me the dates? Because I don't want to do the math that quick. 1,036. Okay, see, 1,036. So what I was doing, though, when I was counting the days, I wanted to be the new guy as long as possible. So if I made a mistake, I could say, hey, I'm just the new guy. Forgive me, please. It's only been 1,036 days. But now I can't really use that. So I'm not the new guy anymore. But in a lot of ways, it actually feels like it because the last two years have been crazy with COVID and shutdowns and restarts and – all the things that we had to deal with. So 1,036, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so we'll keep counting. Things still feel new because you haven't let anything get stale. You're constantly doing things, upgrading things, which that brings us to our next yeah. topic, which is the facilities yeah. talk. We've got the Centennial campaign, which is yeah. really the hottest topic with you right now. So I wanna know how long has this campaign been in the talks yeah. for you? So even before I got here, so I started on July the 8th, mm -hmm. 2019, I got introduced early June. June 3rd is when I got introduced. And there, there was already some discussions about master plan, uh, facility campaigns, what was needed, what were the wants, because there's needs and wants, and there, there's both, and you have to do both. And so those conversations started well before I got here. But I would say it was a little kind of disorganized in terms of, you know, kind of what was going to be the impact? If you move one building, that would impact another building. We're not just dealing with kind of blank pieces of ground, if you will, where we can just go build a brand new facility and there's nothing in the way. We weren't really dealing with that. So this really started in earnest, probably from what I've been told back in 2017, 18. When I got here in the summer of 2019, there were some meetings I went to and I said, time out. We need to kind of have a better vision, be better organized knowing that there was going to be impact. If you touched one building, that would impact another building. Let's make sure we're doing this the, the right way. And so it had been in the works for a long time. I got here in summer of 2019, about six months into it, I felt like, okay, we're ready to start engaging coaches. We're ready to start engaging the 12th Man Foundation in terms of feasibility. How much money can we raise? How do we pay for all this? Facilities usually come down to time and money. So we needed a funding plan. We needed time. Well, and then March 13th happens, 2020, and that's the day that we shut down college sports, which means everything got put on hold. So let's make sure we can practice. Let's make sure we can play. So we had to take that, that spring and summer of 2020 and make sure we could support our athletes and make sure that it was a safe as possible environment during the COVID environment. So everything got put on the shelf. January 2021, we dusted everything off and said, can we break ground in the summer of 20, 2022? And right now we're on track. Here in the next couple of weeks, you'll see construction fences. You'll see things. We're actually taking out all the pieces of the indoor track right now. I was in there last week for practice, and it was it's bare bones. kind of eerie, right? <laughs> I, I was in there last week, too, and it's like there's no scoreboard. Mm -hmm. We're taking down banners. We're moving apparatus and equipment. So it's kind of eerie. So uh, that's kind of how the process started and the time frame. And, you know, it is going to be disruptive. There are going to be some things where we have to hit the pause button. We're not going to have an indoor track for one indoor season. Well, thank God I won't be here. But the sacrifice, that. I know, the sacrifice of getting a new one and doing all the other things, we felt, you know what, it's, it's worth it to do it. So there's a lot that goes into it, uh, but really excited about where we are. Some of the hot topics were with the indoor track was what's happening to the old softball stadium? Is that getting completely demo? Yeah, eventually, eventually, eventually. So part of this whole transition is we actually need some of those spaces mm -hmm. for temporary housing of, okay. of different products within our athletic department. So training room, as an example. So we're taking out the West Campus training mm -hmm. room, not mm -hmm. the one that's in the Cushing Stadium. Right. The one for the soccer team. The one for, tennis. exactly, soccer, tennis. So we need a staging area for a training room. So we actually need the softball stadium mm -hmm. to stay up for a little bit longer. But as soon as we're through this temporary phase, we want all of that to come down. And, and my vision on that corner is one, it should look better because we have the chain link fence. Yeah. And, but we can make that kind of a multi-purpose training space. So during an indoor track meet, we could use that space to warm up. During a, a regular Tuesday or a, or a Monday morning, maybe that, that space is a – a running space for basketball team or the volleyball team mm -hmm. if they want to come over and run sprints outside. So really kind of turning that corner into a multi-purpose uh, training complex is 
is what that vision is. One of my favorite things with Kyle Field getting upgraded mm -hmm. was the complete demolition of the the whole grandstands. Right. There's a great video of it just getting dropped right. like a hat. Right. Will that right. happen to the indoor track? No. There's not just no. going to be. Do you want some, it to happen? I want some dynamite. Do you want some dynamite? I want some dynamite. No, uh, there. I don't know. no pyrotechnics um, around uh, demolition. So they're going to, they actually, because we're keeping the indoor football mm. up for a little bit longer, the way they almost have to take it down kind of piece by piece. So they have to kind of pull the, the outside, the skin of it off. Then there's a metal structure underneath and they'll kind of pick that apart. The, it's really like a fancy tent. It is like a fancy tent right now. So yeah. there's not going to be any dynamite. Yeah, those are only a meter apart yeah. from each other. So you yeah. can't really blow yeah. that up. Usually, not, not uh, <laughs> usually you need dynamite around brick and concrete. Mm -hmm. With this building, it's it's like a metal structure with a fabric kind of adhesive uh, type structure. So no dynamite. But you wanted to be the one to hit the button. I wanted to be. We probably well, could have sold uh, you are tickets. So far down you know? the totem pole, that <laughs> yeah. was not going to be. That would be. Right. That's a donor perk, actually. That's right. That's right. So sorry, that's not going to be you, Jake. Yeah. So um, I heard that the main goal for fundraising mm. was about 120 million. 120 million. And we're right, right now at 90. We're right around 90. Okay. Yep. So where did the majority of the current funds come from? Yeah. So what's really interesting about um, our $90 million raised so far, it actually about 90% um, of it is coming from about 12 donors right now. I figured. <laughs> so you think about that and, and we're uh, over the next couple of weeks, we'll slowly announce, you know, this family made a gift of X amount. This person made a gift of X amount. And we'll start seeing those gifts come in and people I think are going to be, wow, Aggies are really stepping up. So so about 90% is raised from a small group of donors. Is this the same getting, group from the football stadium within the You know the what, 12? it's uh, a little bit of a, 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 bit of a, mix, a mix. So there's some that have been around a long mm -hmm. time. There's actually some new donors that are involved in our campaign that, are, that it's really exciting to see, you know, younger generations step up, new donors step up. Our 12th Man Foundation has done a great job of identifying those people. Our job is to have the vision then their job is to just share it with the donors and then the donors decide, hey, I want to, I, I believe in this vision. I believe in the, you know, the consolidation of athletic facilities. I believe in a new academic center. So it's really cool that we're seeing some new people uh, step up into this. So, Right. I feel like one of my goals in life is to just be so loaded where I can donate a few million <laughs> and not even question it. So I don't need to have yeah. names. I know yep. y'all are going to announce yep. that. And yep. I don't need to even know numbers. Yep. But like, how big is the biggest donation we're talking? Yeah. Ballpark. Yeah. So the top three gifts so far are the three largest gifts in the history of the Twelfth Man Foundation, wow. Texas A&M wow. Athletics. And so we're talking, you know, eight figure gifts. Wow. So seven <laughs> figure is a million. <laughs> So eight figure is 10 plus million. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about is several gifts in that eight figure range, several gifts in the high seven figure range. And so I think that's where people will be like, okay, Aggies uh, just oh, lost our son. Well, we lost a planet. Well, Texas, um, don't rip us one. <laughs> the, the AC's blowing it. But we'll, we'll see that in the next couple of weeks. And that's where people are going to be like, okay, Aggies are really stepping up. And what I, I made the statement the other day, like if people were mad about they think we have a lot of money or NIL is making people mad around Texas A&M athletics. Wait till they see some of these numbers and they'll be like, boy, Texas A&M, like you said, our, our program is uh, going to outer space. And so I think people are going to be excited okay, about I what they see. It it's really nice to see because you can kind of look around the campus. You see George Mitchell, you see the McFerrins, right. you see Nye, and those names are everywhere. Right. Now we're going to start seeing the next generation of right. That's right. donors. No, no doubt about it. All right, so I want to flash it back a yep. little bit, okay. back to when you first became the AD. You hired Jimbo as yeah. the head coach. Actually, I did not hire Jimbo. You didn't? Scott Woodward. He was here already. Yep. Really? He was, yeah, he was here already. I thought it yep. went you and then yep. Jimbo immediately, no, and I no. thought you Jimbo had a was first. hand in that. Yeah, Jimbo. But we kept, how about this, though? We kept Jimbo. We kept him. Because of last fall, the craziness of the college football cycle. Oh, we can get into that. Well, and if you would like extending <laughs> his contract back in August and everybody thought, why is A&M extending his contract? So, so I, I didn't hire Jimbo, uh, but I love working with him. He and I, I think have formed a great partnership. And so we could say that, hey, we, you kept him from the craziness of the coaching carousel. So has having had Jimbo made it easier to recruit other really top-notch, high-end 
head coaches? You're, you're spot on. There's no doubt about that. And so when we hired Coach Slosnagel mm -hmm. last spring, when we promoted uh, Coach Corton in men's golf, when we hired Coach Chadwell mm -hmm. in women's golf, Joni Taylor in women's basketball, look, people know football. Football carries the weight, right? It's mm -hmm. the visibility. It's the revenue. We're filling 110,000 people at Kyle Field. People know that. But what they see about a and is that we're broad-based. We're not just all focused on football. Mm -hmm. We're track. We're tennis. We're golf. We're baseball. I mean, people, women's basketball's won a national championship. Softball's won a national championship. So people see that and they say, okay, look what Jimbo walked into. Look what Coach Slosnagel's doing. Look at the women's golf turnaround with Coach Chadwell. Men's golf's always been solid. Coach Corton's continuing that. People see that and they say, hey, what are they doing at A&M? I want to be a part of that. So there is no question that people see the, the commitment level and they want to be a part of A&M. So, and that's, that's what drove me here, commitment level. So same, same thing applies when we're hiring coaches. So speaking of big name, mm -hmm. new head coaches, we've got new women's basketball coach, Joni Taylor. Right. How big was it to get her? And we've now got a female head coach overseeing the team. It was really big. I, I think one of the things that is you know, modern day college athletics is, and Kennedy, you, you can relate to this as, as a female athlete, is let's have people that are relatable to our athletes. And I think that's, that was our pursuit is can we find somebody who's relatable to the modern day athlete who can relate to, to young women in the game of college basketball? And we, we talked to male coaches as well. But when we found out that we had a shot at Joni, sitting head coach, played in the SEC, has recruited at a high level. You know, maybe she hasn't gone to the Final Four or anything like that at Georgia, but tr well here. trending in the right direction mm -hmm. and at a place, again, where she sees the commitment. When we had a chance to talk to her, and we, will, we walked out of that meeting room, and I was like, why would we not hire her? Like, this is a no-brainer. Like, look at her passion. Look at her pedigree look at the relatability, look at the coaching acumen. I mean, she just fit every criteria that we wanted. And so, and she was actually, she was recruiting us. She was like, hey, I want to be in Texas. I see what you guys are doing at A&M. You guys have won a national championship there. She was starting to recruit us. And I'm like, okay, you need me. This is a perfect, like, she wants to be here. She sees this. And so it, it was a really cool uh, process. Right. see it come through and, and immediately after recruiting just kind of had a snowball effect we got the third best player nationally right. commit like the following week which really you know Joni was a natural fit at Georgia people thought she was a graduate of Georgia I actually thought that a couple of years ago that did she go to school at Georgia because she was so natural there and so I think what it what it means when recruits follow her is that that's a testament to who she is mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter what program she's at she's going to be a fit She's going to perform at a high level. So I think that was a really cool thing to have those recruits uh, follow her. So with this being the 50th anniversary of Title IX mm -hmm. this year, right. how have you seen things evolve and grow, such as female quality and opportunities in college sports? I just think, um, one, it's just the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do to, to be broad-based, to, to make sure we support all of our athletes. It doesn't matter, male, female, black, white, brown. We want to be all encompassing to, to everybody. And so it, to me, it's just the right thing to do. Um, I hate hearing the stories that I hear of things that happened 60 years ago, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago, uh, because it wasn't always equal. Even though there's a federal law that was passed in 1972, people still didn't view it that way. And so uh, Lynn Hickey is a real good friend of mine. She was the women's uh, basketball coach here back in the 80s. She was also the associate athletic director, senior women's administrator. And some of the stories she tells fighting for just the same kind of travel or the same scholarships or the even the same uniforms, she had to fight for that. And so you hate hearing that, but I think it motivates us today to make sure that we never slip, that we don't go backwards, that we're always on the cutting edge. Um, and so the 50 anniversary is a great reminder that, hey, we can never go backwards. 
Let's not repeat the same mistakes of, of the past. Um, and it just shows, again, that A&M is a place that thinks at a high level, has the resources at a high level, and it's our job to, to continue that. And I think the celebrations uh, that we're, we're planning will be really cool and neat for, uh, for folks to, to see the impact and to see how far that we've come. That's awesome. So going back to more of the money side of mm -hmm. your job, yep. I know that NIL, we're about a year into it being right. a law for NCAA. How have you seen NIL impact your job, directly, indirectly, your yeah. view of it? You know, when, uh, when I first wanted to be an athletic director, when I was probably a little younger than you, I was in college and I wanted to be an AD, I thought, work with coaches, work with athletes, make sure we have the right kind of facilities. Mm -hmm. Never thought that you'd have to worry about state law, federal law, hmm. um, lobbying with our local delegation, you know, if you will, on making sure that we have the right kind of law for our student athletes. But we've had to do that. We've had to do that the last couple of years. So I, maybe I have an honorary degree in like governmental relations or something like that, um, or a law degree. Sometimes I feel that way. So the cool thing about A&M is we're a leader in this space in terms of being on the forefront of helping craft the state law. So we talk to state politicians. We, we talk to our governmental relations staff about, hey, we'd like these things in the state law to make sure that it's done the right way. So I feel really good that we had an impact from that standpoint. So we were in on the forefront. And then what we've tried to do is educate all of you as athletes with all the different technology. So we have the Amplify platform. We have Influencer as, a, as an app. We've tried to do some educational sessions. We do things around finance and, and financial literacy and making sure that, hey, if you accept this product, maybe it's a car, maybe it's a scooter, there's taxes that you have to pay on that. <laughs> That's not really just a free car, right? There's People a might just don't understand that. There's a tax bill that'll come with that. And so one of, the, one of the really neat things is there's a reporting mechanism. So what I've learned is that athletes are really diligent about reporting their contracts to compliance. So that's been a healthy thing. So we can catch anything that may not fit the state law or maybe a tax implication. Hey, reminder, you're going to get a tax bill at the end of, of the year. Make sure you have enough cash to pay that. So those things have been really cool. Um, the, the thing that impacts our daily job is probably where this is going. We don't know yet. What does the future hold? Will the state law be adapted, um, ad uh, adopted in a different way? Will there be federal legislation? Will, at some point in time, the universities be able to be more involved in NIL? Because right now, I can't come to you and say that I've got NASA as an entity, and they want to arrange a sponsorship deal with you, Kennedy, or you, Jake. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't set that up. I can't negotiate that. Off. We have to just say, that's between you and NASA. Mm -hmm. We can't be involved in it. Now, we can educate you on the backside of that in terms of the contract, but I can't say, that's a bad deal or, oh, that's a really good deal. You should take that. So could we be more involved at some point in time? Maybe. So the day-to-day -day part of it is where's this all going? What's the future hold? How does sort of the enterprise of college athletics? We talked about raising $90 million, and that's great. We have $30 million left. But is that sustainable moving forward? We don't know yet, right? We think it is here at A&M. We're, we're definitely on the right side of the equation. But do people start taking their money and saying, hey, instead of buying season tickets, I want to do NIL, which is great for the athletes. But then does that mean the athletic department can't sustain what we provide on a daily basis? And sustain Those are all the unknowns yeah. that we have to figure out. And definitely out. sustain the non-revenue sports. Right. That's right. And so what is, what is sort of the model? So what I worry about sort of as part of my day job is what does the model look like moving forward? And we just don't know. I believe it, it can be great. College athletics and higher education, going to class, monetizing name, image, likeness, those things can go, all go hand in hand. But in five years, what do we look like? In 10 years, what do we look like? We don't want to diminish opportunity by any means. And so that's kind of what impacts our day job is what's the future hold? And at this point, we just have to deal with it. We have to roll with it. We have to be ready to pivot as needed and be flexible and nimble. 
Um, and at the end of the day, we're here to support all of you. I mean, that's we say that, and sometimes that gets lost when you hear 90 million or you hear contracts or you hear big buildings, but it really comes down to how do we support all of you. So um, there's a lot to unpack on NIL because it's just changing and evolving, but I, I think we've done a great job of, of uh, administering all the uh, aspects of it. Right, and from a student athlete perspective, I agree. Okay, I think good. You're doing a great job. That's good. You're doing good. Thank you. Thank I, you. I think if we're going to look into the future, we got to look into little brother and OU joining okay. the SEC. Okay. That okay. was kind of the big news last summer. Right. What is your thoughts or hearings of the pod system? When is this actually going to happen? 2025, 2026 yeah. football season. What is kind of the latest news with <clears> them joining? So you've been studying. If you Just heard, if you said the word "pod system," I oh, I can I can I, can, is, I I think we have, might topic. have we might have an uh, an image that Sam can have because having yeah. eighteen yeah here's yeah. a little pod okay. system okay okay I prefer oh wow, he's got the mountain pod the golf pod this is the this river is one pod. of the this is one of the scenarios okay. I okay. definitely think I don't like the Texas has most of Texas the frontier that's not pod. cool no. No, but you change the that. boring half. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. I think A&M okay. could take Vanderbilt, Missouri, and Kentucky in in football. Okay. I think that should be our plot. Okay. Well, so uh, you you ask about timing. Mm -hmm. So July first, two thousand twenty-five. Everything is geared up towards. That's when you said little brother. We'll say <laughs> we'll say TU on the show. <laughs> TU and OU will come in July first, two thousand twenty-five. The indications from the Big Twelve is I don't believe there'll be an exit plan for Texas and Oklahoma to get out any sooner. I just don't – no one sees and that. And there's rumors that they're adding their so four they're teams. Adding, so they're adding the four teams mm -hmm. maybe as early as even next year, yeah. 2023. So there could be a two-year window where they're at a 14-team conference. Big 12 be calling with 10 teams was right, just comical. Right, right, right. So I always hated that. The <laughs> timing piece looks like 2025. And then as far as scheduling formats and all those things – so we're right in the middle of that right now. With the non-conference games that we schedule 10 years in advance, right. eight years in That's advance. Right. I don't know. Um, so there's two kind of two threshold questions. One, do we go to eight game? Do we stay at eight games? So we're talking just football scheduling. Mm -hmm. Eight conference games or do we go to nine? And get so rid you have of, to answer and get rid, that. And get rid of one of our FCS games? Potentially, right? Oof. So So eight versus nine has to be answered. And then do you stick with divisions or do you have a single division? That has to be answered. Mm -hmm. And then it comes down to if you go with eight games, who's your permanent opponent? And if you go with nine games, who are your permanent opponents? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the pod system works in terms of how it rotates through over like it was a an four, interesting concept, though. eight year period. But is that was that a fan driven no, concept was, or was that no, an it was a concept con that okay. we studied. A absolutely. So then what you have to account, what we're trying to accomplish in all of this is we should rotate among the 16 we members. We want to play everyone home and away more within often. the four That's or five exactly years. right. There's no reason why we haven't played Georgia at Kyle Field. And this will this is our 11th year in the mm -hmm. SEC. There's no reason that should have happened. So, more variety, more rotation, that's definitely going to be accomplished in whatever model we go to. But we've got to answer some threshold questions and then you get down to how often are we playing to you? And when are and we does, playing? And does does that go back to Thanksgiving? And when exactly is that just another? Is it just another game? Is it played in November? Is it played in, you know, late October? Those are all the things that are coming together. Do we as continue we speak, the so, Arkansas yeah. series in Jerry World? That's a hot topic among. The answer fans. on that is no. Yes, so that contract yes. expires in 2024. So no matter what we go with, we were going to let that contract. Sorry, yeah, exactly. sorry, people yeah. in the back. Exactly. I just I prefer yeah. home and home yeah. games. Absolutely, especially in SEC games. So that'll definitely. But we may not play Arkansas every year. And so that those mm -hmm. are the things that are being worked out. So we have a we have a SEC meeting at the end of May, and we're going to go through all of this with the presidents and the chancellors and the football coaches and the basketball coaches and the faculty athletic reps and all the ads. We're going to flush out a lot of these details. I don't know when things would be public after that, but the end of May, we're going to make some critical decisions about how uh, the SEC moves forward. All right, well, we're going to do a little rapid fire okay. of okay. Jake's thoughts. Okay. Here we go. Here I we did go. not proofread these. I'm scared. Mm. You're scared. I'm, right, I'm, I'm gonna, scared because I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to think on my feet here. I'm going to rip them off, and then you can either stop me, okay. and we can get okay. dive into it. But let's engage the student body here on campus. Okay. There needs to be drink deals 
alcoholic beverages <laughs> on like a Tuesday baseball game. We need to bring more fans, not on the premier days. Mm. A ten dollar yeah. dose is criminal. Okay. That's that's number okay. one. Renovations. Is that a thought or a question? That's a statement. It's a okay. Thought. What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think drink specials around athletic events are kind of frowned upon. Okay. Right. Fair, well, we just, just we just added. We don't want to encourage. We just we just yeah. added yeah. alcoholic beverages to SEC sports within the last, last couple years. Marketing to students, yeah. Jake. Right. right. Ha- majority right. aren't even of drinking age. All right, fair. Scratch okay. that okay. one. Scratch okay. that one. I told you to okay. read these. Great job. Re- renovations yeah. to read. Move it. Make it smaller. Mm. Maybe take over the golf course and Ooh. build a new one. Also, move the alumni beh- that is originally behind the benches mm. to the other side. Just because when we had the yep. Kentucky game, yep. there was kind of a s- ticket scenario yeah, situation it was. It was, where yeah. it was packed. Right. But on TV, some of the alumni got to their seats a little right. later so that it looked not packed. Right. Right. Lots to unpack there. Definitely need Sorry. the students closer <laughs> around the court yes. and need them on the sideline. There's no doubt about it. Capacity-wise, for basketball, we believe Reed could be a lot smaller. I, I like the smaller, Small, more packed more aspect. intimate, closer to the court. Mm-hmm. From a university event perspective, we have graduation this week. Move to Kyle Field. It's going to be sweat. packed. It's going to be packed. Reed will be full. So we need a big venue. I don't know if you want to go outside in 100-degree temperatures. <laughs> Uh, for grad here. for graduation, so lots of things. We want to answer the question: Do you build a new arena, or do you renovate Reed? That's still a question that we have to answer. So back to our little centennial campaign. There's another phase to this. There's a soccer building, a soccer renovation. There's Bluebell Park. We need to do some things, and then there's Reed Arena. So there's other facilities. So you're onto something, Jake, with Reed okay. Arena. Okay, back. Intramural championships should be played Ooh. in the stadiums Ooh. on Reed Arena. Hey, look, we uh, we have a great partnership with uh, with Campus Recreation. I think with, we should make so, that happen. So, you know, we uh, our swimming and diving teams are in a Campus Recreation mm-hmm. facility. Hey, if somebody wants to put that on the table, that'd be fun. All right. and also, last last rapid fire one: engagement of organizations. A and M has the most student organizations on the campus. Kind of the main driver of these organizations right. is philanthropy to kind of add maybe a participation. If you show Mm -hmm. up to different sporting events, you get points. And at the end of the year, the athletic department would donate to their philanthropy. I think that would drive a lot of participation, some more attendance. Yes, I'm just, it's like double points for SEC track meet. And then that could kind of knock two birds with one stone. So you must be sitting in on our marketing and our external I'm not, but I, I can. I can so be. So we I actually, can, uh, can uh, this control. fall, we're going to launch a rewards program. There, we there go. used to be back in the day. Ooh. Are you psychic? Texas A&M Athletics yeah. would have like the punch card, like mm-hmm. literally like now it's all technology mm-hmm. based. So we're, everything we're, can be tied with your, with, your, yep. with your credit or your uh, We're going to roll out a rewards card. program. We haven't added the donation I think, component piece, but of I think it. you should. But add you will it be able to, to win prizes. Organi- you need to. Yeah. Oh, they could, should register in the organizations and kind of have a competition. Yeah. Because people get competitive on these things. They do. Jake is passionate about. So this. the point, really the passionate. rewards program is coming this okay. fall. So that's why I like. To great. Uh, nice. I don't know about the donation part, but <laughs> okay. you're you're onto something. Johnny Manziel's statue. He won the yeah. Heisman in 2012. Baker Mayfield won it years later, and he just got his statue this right. past month. Are we looking right. at that in the future? Maybe 12 years from that? That would be very A&M, right. 2024. Yeah, this year will be the 10th ten, ten, year, tenth year, tenth year that he won it, right? Mm-hmm. So each university has different policies on statues. Mm-hmm. Right now, the A&M policy would not allow us to do a Johnny Manziel statue. Okay. So I think we need a little more time to go by before we want to honor. We're going to honor. We're going to do something this fall mm-hmm. to honor Johnny around the 10-year anniversary. But the statue piece is not just as straightforward as saying, hey, let's put one in the North mm-hmm. Plaza right beside the John David Crow statue. And okay. so we, it's not quite that simple here at, uh, at maybe Texas a, A&M. Maybe a thing, Mo, too, I was about to say, I'd prefer in a thing statue. Wow, she's amazing. Yeah. That's right. All right, last segment, we are going to do a most okay. likely two game. Okay. We're going to rapid fire these off. We have a picture of all of the okay. head coaches. Okay. Sam, if you could put that up for me. Now, we're going to ask questions <laughs> on which one of these coaches is most likely to do this. Ready? Okay. Most likely to sing karaoke at Northgate. Also, oh, there's a screen right uh, here if you want to look yeah, this way too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can look that way too. I think Coach Bird 
Coach Coon, <laughs> for sure. Do you know All what right. her go-to song would be? I don't know what her go-to song would be, but definitely, Queen, definitely has a great personality. All right, most likely to exceed their budget. Ooh, um, Coach, uh, we'll say Coach G, Coach Guerreri <laughs> right now. All right, most likely to um, watch the most film. Jimbo. There's no question about it. I mean, he is a grinder. He is in the film room like 24-7. All right. Um, most likely to call you past working hours. Uh, most of them are actually uh, pretty good, but I, I welcome the calls. Um, you know what? New coaches typically need some more help uh, early on, so let's say uh, Coach Sloshnagel. Mm, nice. All right. Most likely to remember your birthday. Buzz Williams. <clears throat> Do you follow him on Twitter? Uh, yes, yes, I love his tweets. His tweets Jake about birthdays the within the basketball program. Mm -hmm. He's phenomenal. And so his, in his notes. In his notes and everything. So uh, there's no question, Coach Williams. All right. Most likely to miss the athletic department meeting. <laughs> well, we just said Jimbo because he's watching film. <laughs> and a lot of times, like, I'll, I'll walk in there maybe around lunchtime or so, and he'll look up, is it already 12 noon? Um, so let's let's just say Jimbo on that one too. Most likely to seek you would seek advice from. Well, I think that's the great thing about uh, all of our coaches is they're all knowledgeable. Um, <clears throat> Coach Henry, uh, just because he's won so many championships. Buzz, because of his leadership style and the, as many books that he reads. Like I could go in and say, "Hey, Coach, have you read this book?" Oh yeah, I read it two years ago. Here's my notes. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll he'll hand me so buzz with coach uh, henry you've sure. got about a century of knowledge there Ex that's right um, <laughs> i'm gonna get in no trouble let's see um you know what coach denton i tell you what of any coach every coach follows all of our athletic teams but when i have conversations with coach denton he'll tell me about a football recruit or he'll tell me about a basketball recruit he follows recruiting and all of our other sports so i usually learn something from uh, coach denton all right, this one's a little wild. Okay. But I, didn't, I didn't proofread this okay, one. Okay. Who would you most likely call if you needed help bearing a body? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> that is a good. Well, I wanted uh, okay. to see who was a ride or die. Okay. Not because of anything untort, but <laughs> you know what? Tana McKay, we have an unbelievable equestrian complex, and there's lots of hiding places. <laughs> like you could go out on the cross the country, country course. course. Just throw it in that and little lake. And there's probably a lake. There's probably trees. So I love watching Ozark on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of catching up on season four, I think, is what it is right now. And so, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't make it in that show. And so you see a lot of shovels and stuff like that. So, Different again, not that them. Tana McKay, our equestrian coach, is untoward. She's got the resources. But I'm just thinking of space and, like, hiding spots. Good choice. And I think Equestrian has a few of those. Good choice. Well, I love that we're ending on a high okay. note there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's you. not think about that piece of it, just the, uh, you know, the experience, right? Right. Well, thank you so much for right. coming in. Thank and you all. And sitting on the bench with us bench warmers. Absolutely. This has truly been a great episode. Yes, so we thank really you so much. You, you guys in. do a great job, so keep up the great work. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully we can get you in maybe next year when all of our groundbreaking centennial right. stuff has started. That's exactly right. We'll, well thank you guys for watching this episode of the Seniors on JV podcast. We will see you all on the next one. Bye, guys.